Hello, hello! So this is just going to be a quick demonstration flight showing how to fly an ILS, DME and VOR approach using an approach chart. If you haven't seen my video on how to read one of these charts, I'd recommend watching that first so you can understand what will be going on in this video. So in this video, I will be flying an approach to runway 5 at Inverness using this chart here. So let's take a closer look and see how we're going to fly the approach. First things first, I will be flying south of the airport to begin with. Then what I'm going to do is tune into the Inverness VOR and fly directly to it. Once I pass over the VOR, I'm going to adjust my VOR instrument so I can fly a radial of 244 degrees away from the airport. During this part of the approach, we'll also begin descending from 4000 feet down to 2100 feet and also getting the ILS tuned in and ready for landing. Looking at the end of this outbound leg, we need to have completed our descent before 8.4 nautical miles away from the ILS system. Then we'll begin a left hand turn to line up with the localizer, and finally at 6.4 nautical miles we'll hit the glide slope and begin descending towards the runway. So let's jump into the plane and give this a go. Okay, so here we are up in the plane just now. We're up at uh, 4,000 feet, and believe it or not, we are just south of Inverness. Um, so this is the kind of typical situation where you'd be flying by instruments. Um, you can just about see the ground down there. And for anyone who doesn't believe me, there we have the uh, GPS in Inverness back up to the north there. So first things first would be to into the Inverness VOR, sorry, and head back uh, to it. So the VOR station is on a frequency of 109.2 so I'm just going to tune that in and confirm it with the um, with the Morse code identifier there. Actually before I do that um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to navigate using VOR2 and keep um, VOR1 open for the ILS. So that was a mistake on my part there so We'll listen out for this, make sure the uh, Morse code identifier is picked up. Yep, and that's definitely in Venice there. So let's tr try and work out where we are in relation or just now. Okay, so on a, um, a radial of about one six zero, so three four zero should take us back directly to Inverness. Yeah, so what I'll do now um, is I've got the plane flying on um, autopilot just now, just to make navigating a bit easier. So I'll turn the plane around now to a heading of three four zero, and then we can just tweak it as necessary there. So you can see, we can't really see what's going on that side, but if you look at the attitude, you can see that we're turning to the right there. And also the heading indicator. So this is basically instrument flying, is when you can't really distinguish anything out of the cockpit. You know, the view to the ground isn't too bad, but um, you, know, you can't really see far off in the distance. So this is when you're really relying on your in instruments to fly. You should see this level off now. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll switch on to nav, and hopefully the plane should pick up the um, VOR signal there. It's been a while since I've um, used the autopilot to pick up uh, nav, so I'm not sure if that's going to work properly or not. No, never mind. So what I'll do um, is I'll just fly, sort of semi semi manually, fly uh, back into the Inverness VOR. Um, what we also need to do is we need to work out how far away it is. So if I flick the DME down here onto radio two. So that tells us now that we're at a distance of 10.7, 10.6 nautical miles away from the VOR station. So 
Um, what I'm going to do is just get ourselves back online and then um, I'll cut the video here and once we're getting a bit closer to the VOR station I'll kind of bring the video back in. Okay, so here we are one mile away from the VOR station now, uh, just confirming that we are up at 4,000 feet, which is the altitude we need to be passing over the VOR station at. So, once the signal goes dead here on VOR2, then what I'll do is I'll turn out to a heading of 244 degrees, and then I'll adjust the VOR so we can fly that radial. So you can see that the needle's starting to move now the closer we get to it, which is normal as expected. And you see the needle there goes dead. So we'll turn out to 244 here. Be around there somewhere. And then we'll adjust the VOR indicator here. So I need to zoom in and get, the, get this exactly right. I think that's it there. So you can see that the needle's indicating that we're um, just to the left of it, so or just to the right of it, so we're just north of the, um, the radial at the moment. What I'll also begin to do now is descend down to 2,100 feet. Oops, 2,100 there. I'll probably end up adjusting the rate of descent as we go, just to make sure there. So I'll turn left slightly just to bring us back onto that radio. Actually putting a bit more throttle because we are slowing down a bit there as well. Okay, so really want to try and get back onto that radio sooner rather than later. There we go, so the, you can see the needles coming back now. So usually at this point of the approach you'd be setting the plane up to land. I'm not going to worry about doing things like that, like running a checklist or doing lights or anything. So you can see already we're now 2.5 nautical miles away from the... Uh, VOR station, so we'll turn back out now and then we'll try and track that out accurately. So the next step now is to get the ILS tuned in, so I'm going to do that just now on my NAV1 radio, so we have both the uh, localizer and the glide slope needles active on here, so uh, frequency 8.5 tune that in and listen out for the Morse code That's definitely Vanessa there. So um, what I also want to do is switch this round now to um, the localizer course, which is 055. Um, it's slightly different uh, between the simulator. I think that's it set already. So perfect, um, nice and quick there. So yeah, that's one difference between the simulator and the chart is that the chart says it's on the, the localizer is at 054. Whereas in the game it's listed as 055, so that's what I'm going to use there. And also what I'm going to do is, because I need to use the ILS system for my DME measurements, I'm going to flick the um, DME back onto Radio 1, which is what the ILS system is tuned into. So the turn will need to begin at uh, 8.4 nautical miles, as listed down here. So we're down at 3,000 feet now, we should be... Uh, down at 2,100 feet just before we begin the turn there at this rate of descent. As you can see, all of this has been done by what we can see on the instruments. We really don't have a good view outside of the cockpit at all. So we're just about tracking the radial almost perfectly there. I'll just turn slightly to the left just so we can get sort of back onto it perfectly. So I've just turned a few degrees to the left and then once that lines up we'll turn back onto sort of a more specific 244 heading. So 
So I'm just at the moment now I'm just watching altitude and the uh, distance there. And yeah, I think we should be down just about the right time there. So once we um, once we reach a distance of 8.4 nautical miles, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, just turn to the left 90 degrees, and then um, hopefully the um, what I'll do is I'll set the autopilot to run the approach. So hopefully that should turn us onto the uh, the localizer once we get in line. You can see the glide slope needle here is moving, so that's us coming. So sort of passing underneath the glide slope now, so we're in line with it, and you see as the needle continues going upwards, that's us kind of dropping underneath it now. Because you remember with ILS approaches, you always want to intercept the glide slope from below, so that's what's happening there just now. And we're just about following the radio radio perfectly here as well. So we're about to level off at 2,100 feet distance is 8.3 nautical miles and 8.4 so turn around to 150 degrees increase the throttle because we've now leveled off so the plane's going to try and lose a bit of speed there you can see the ground turning underneath us and then once we level off there. I'll tell the autopilot to approach. So you can see the headings now disabled and the autopilot should now turn us onto the localizer. So now um, our VOR2 and our NAV2 is pretty much almost redundant at this point. We're going to be focusing now on VOR1 here. So you can see we're just to the left and underneath the glide slope. So you can see the, the, the vertical needle now is coming, coming back towards centre. We've got the little up arrow indicating that we're moving towards it, which is good. So speed is good. Altitude is holding steady at the moment, good. So we're just about lined up now, so you should hopefully see the uh, plane turn just a little bit more. Yeah, you can see the uh, heading indicator turning here. And then hopefully, as we hit the glide slope, the, the altitude hold should uh, automatically disable. And then we will begin descending to the runway. And there it goes there. So just reduce the throttle so we can control our speed during descent. Not too worried about uh, the aircraft not lining up properly yet. Um, you can see, oh, it's actually started descending before 6.4 nautical miles. Maybe, again, maybe that's possibly a discrepancy between the simulator and uh, the information that we have, like the real world information in the chart there. But uh, nothing drastic at the moment. You know, we are descending. And um, it looks like we're getting back online with the localizer. So it looks like everything is going as it should be. So hopefully I set the weather to have to be very cloudy at 1,000 feet. So hopefully once we uh, drop below 1,000 feet, then the visibility should get a little bit better. So that's us pretty much lined up on glide slope and localizer now. Five miles away. We still don't have a visual of the runway yet. OK, 
Okay, so the speed is now within the white arc, so I'm going to put the first stage of flaps out. You can see the ground starting to come into view a bit better down here. Just increase the throttle a bit because I don't want the speed to come down too fast too quickly. Or too far too quickly, rather. It's a bit much. So, just about to pass through 1000, so visibility should start getting a little bit better. And hopefully the runway will come into view. The lights should be on on the runway, so we should get a clear indication shortly. And the next stage of flaps there, just to slow us down a little bit more. And then once I've got like visual confirmation of where the runway is, then I will disable the autopilot and land it manually. But looking at the VOR one indicator, we're still on the localizer, we're still on the glide slope, so we're definitely lined up with the runway there and I think you can just about start seeing the approach lights coming into view now. Yep, there we go. So last stage of flaps. Yep, so there you have the uh, approach light system. Okay, so I'm confident that's that we're coming up to the runway now, so disable the autopilot. And I'll put this one down. Oops. It's just drifting off to the lift already. Come on, get back online. So yeah, looking at the ILS, we're one mile away now. Just a tiny bit high. Nothing that we can't rescue though. Landing here is very deceptive because it's got the kind of extended threshold there, so you tend to land a bit short sometimes. But not a big deal. So, thwarts wide all. Let's start to flare. Put her down gently. And there you have um, a complete instrument approach and landing using an approach chart. So, I hope you enjoyed that. So before I leave you, here's a view of how the flight went. This is the chart, and I'm going to slowly overlay my flight analysis from FSX. And you can see that I followed it pretty well. I had a little bit of trouble picking up the outbound radial at first, but the general shape of the approach is right there. So hopefully that helps you guys with approach charts. As always, if you have any questions, ask away. Many thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.